You see, every time that Paul writes about this couple as a tent making couple, because that was their business, they were tent makers. And every time he says these guys were tent makers or they were doing something practical, he would say Aquila and Priscilla. But every time that Paul was talking about them in a spiritual ministry sense, he would say Priscilla, then Aquila. And the first one I want us to look at today is Priscilla. And we see her first in Acts 18, one to two. And it says this, after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife, Priscilla. So the first thing that we know about her is that she's a wife, her husband is called Aquila, and that together they were in Corinth when they met Paul. Later in verse 18, it says this, Paul stayed on in Corinth for some time. Then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. So now we see the couple accompanying Paul on a missionary journey. They are going with Paul to spread the good news of the gospel. But what we need to take note of here is the word order change. In that first verse we read, it talked about Aquila and his wife, Priscilla. And in this second one, we see Priscilla, then Aquila. And we also see this version in Romans 16, 3, where it says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. In 2 Timothy 4, 19, where it says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Anesiphorus. In the patriarchal society that existed at the time, this should not be the case. Men were always named before their wives. Name order was highly important in every social order of the day. Even thinking about today, how often do you hear someone say Mrs. and Mr.? Right? We still say Mr. and Mrs. when we're talking about a couple. And it was even more stronger back then. And some wonder, well, maybe it was because Priscilla was a higher class than her husband and the writers of Luke and Paul. But neither Paul or Luke have shown any regard to class distinction in the rest of their sort of letters or, or books of the Bible. And both of them also at points say Aquila, then Priscilla. You see, every time that Paul writes about this couple as a tent making couple, because that was their business, they were tent makers. And every time he says these guys were tent makers or they were doing something practical, he would say Aquila and Priscilla. But every time that Paul was talking about them in a spiritual ministry sense, he would say Priscilla, then Aquila. And this is important. This was an intentional shift made by Paul to show that Priscilla was the more prominent leader within the couple. John Chrysostom, who was a third century theologian and definitely not a feminist, concluded that Paul named Priscilla first in his letters in recognition of the fact that her piety was superior to her husband's. If we think about other naming groups, we see a similar thing. You see, Paul, when he was with Barnabas right at the beginning in Acts chapter 11, we see Barnabas and Paul. Why? Because Barnabas was the more prominent leader. Paul was rising to his leadership at this time, but he wasn't a prominent leader at that point in Acts. And you see it, Barnabas and Paul, for several chapters. But then halfway through chapter 13, the word order changes and we begin to see Paul and Barnabas. Why? Because Paul has risen to a more prominent place of leadership. Priscilla is the more prominent leader and is put first before her husband. In Acts 18.26, we then meet a guy called Apollos, who was a learned man, had great knowledge and preached about Jesus, even though he only had knowledge of the baptism of John. And in Acts 20, 18, 26, it says this, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. And when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more accurately. What we see Priscilla doing here is teaching. Teaching. 
The word that is translated into our English as explained is the Greek word ektothemi, which means to convey information by careful elaboration, explaining or expounding. Now, I've got a couple of teachers in the room, and I know that if I asked you what you did on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, you would say this. You ectothemi, you explain and you expound and you elaborate with careful carefulness to try and convey some information to your students. Priscilla is ectothemi, teaching a man with great knowledge. And some say that maybe this type of teaching means that she was teaching in a less formal or a less authoritative way. And to be honest, to me, that feels like reading a view into a text. You see, the same word is used to describe Paul's teaching, his response, when in Acts 28, 23, and it says this, from morning till evening, he expounded, ectothemi, to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both the law of Moses and the law of the prophets. That doesn't sound less formal or less authoritative to me. That sounds pretty formal and pretty authoritative. And so if Paul is teaching, then we can say that Priscilla was also teaching. We're also told that she's a co-worker with Paul, that she's a church planter and there's a church happening in her house. So does God permit a woman to lead? Yes. Priscilla is clearly teaching and leading within the early church. 